the just one here and we are back for part two of the brand new podcast series which is how to become a professional wrestler and um, we kind of did this off the cuff for the first episode but we we really enjoyed it um i had fun um so i decided to keep it going people seem to enjoy it so bear with me one second first of all I just want to apologize. I was a little late with the time I said I, was, I would get here. It was about 10 minutes late just because, you know, I've got to look after the dog and all that and get him sorted out before I come to the podcast. Anyway, moving on, there are no advertisers for this as of yet. This is just doing it for the love of it, trying to give something back to you guys. Um, as I said, originally, the, the first episode was really all about getting started. Your first uh footsteps into the business of professional wrestling and last time we tackled uh, how to find a training school which long story short was don't scrimp on quality you know if you've got a, an amazing training school an hour away or an okay one five minutes from you travel the extra hour put in the work is quality over quantity when it comes to your training. Uh, that's going to make a huge difference, and that is going to pay dividends later on. Trust me on that, because, you know, sometimes if you don't select a good trainer, you can learn bad habits, and it can actually set you back in the long run. So we discussed, basically, before you get all this started, you need to find a reason for doing it. You need to know why you're doing it. You know how difficult it's going to be. You understand the dedication you're going to give to training. You need to be training at least twice a week in the professional wrestling training school. But we've done all that last time. If you want more info on that, listen to the first episode. Um, but this week, we're going to talk about, let's assume that you have found a quality training school. Um, you're, you've enrolled and you are now looking to accelerate your training. And what I mean by that is you want to get proficient, you want to get good, you want to get opportunities as quickly as possible. And I'm going to try and tell you a little bit about how you can expect to do that. Now, I'm going to give you a disclaimer here. Um, it's not a one size fits all. What, what works for me might not work for you. Like, for example, the same strategy that's going to work for a big character like myself might not be the same strategy that's going to work for a Will Ospreay, for example. So I do give that disclaimer, but what I will say is I will try and keep it as universal as possible. Uh, really, it all there is no secret. It all just comes down to hard work. But as we've discussed before, there are some ways that you can hack the system and jump the proverbial queue, if you will. Um, so basically, one of the main ways that I've told to, that I've said to you about skipping the queue is with that hard work. Like for example, we break it down into those three areas. You've got your look, which encompasses your physique and your your ring gear and all that stuff. You've got your charisma, which captures your character and your promos, and then you've got your in ring ability, which is you know how legitimate your stuff looks. Are you smooth? Are you having high quality matches? You really want to be performing and knocking it out of the park on all these levels. Now, natural talent is a thing. We've all seen people who just seem to be amazing at something right from the get-go, right from the very first time that we try it. But, you know, I, I'm not one of those people, um, and I'm going to assume that a lot of people listening aren't necessarily one of those people because those type of people might not need a podcast like this. With me, nothing in my life really came easily. You know, I wasn't a natural athlete when I was a kid. I wasn't really good at that at many sports when I was a kid. I was very average in, in all areas and everything that I've ever attained in my life has really been through just hard work. Now, let's think about this. If you're willing to go to the gym and to diet and to look the part, you're already ahead of... 90% of people who want to become professional wrestlers. You'll notice this, especially at the lower levels. Most people who are there aren't really that bothered about their physique. Um, so it's very, very quickly, you can get yourself in the top quartile just by looking the part. By going to training, by getting yourself into shape, that shows that you want to be a professional athlete, and that's exactly a professional athlete. Now, again, another disclaimer, folks. The reason that I'm doing this podcast is uh, kind of twofold. I want to pass on some info to you guys, and I enjoy doing this type of, type of thing. I've really enjoyed the seminars I've done in the past, but also I need to be quite honest with you guys. Um, and you know me, if you're a fan of mine, if you've been following me on Twitch and on Discord and stuff on Facebook and whatnot, you will know that I am very honest with my fans, sometimes to a fault. Sometimes I can give away too much, you know, but I'm just one of these people, I wear my heart on my sleeve. So I'm going to tell you where I'm at right now. And Joe Hendry right now in this moment is not satisfied at all 
I'm not satisfied at all with where I'm at in professional wrestling. Uh, to be quite honest, based on my progress when I started, I expected to be further down the line at this point. Now, I can sit here and whine and moan about why that is, or I can understand the truth which is that it is within my grasp and within my control and what I need to do rather than whining about, you know, maybe want to get to the next level is I now need my work to reflect the results that I want. Now, the truth is when I started in 2013, I was powering through it. I gave it absolutely everything I've got. It was my life. Whereas I have to be honest with you, through experience, I don't want to use the word coast because I've always worked very hard. But what I will say is I have been guilty of taking my foot off the, the gas pedal for one reason or another. I can't, I do not have a good excuse for it. And um, there have been times where, for example, I've had big opportunities and my physique has just not been where it needs to be. And folks, there really is absolutely no excuse for that. So right now, I'm in a position where I'm not happy with where I'm at in professional wrestling. And what I'm trying to do is to restructure my training and my diet and my motivation and my entire approach to what I'm doing to take myself way back to that trainee set, set, you know, mindset. Because when you're there, there's a certain humility about that. Your arrogance goes away. You're, when, when you're, it, gives, it makes you humble. Whether you want to be or not, when you adopt that mindset... It's, I'm trying to think of the right words here, but basically for me, I think it is the right move for me. And the reason I'm doing it is I want you to th remember right now, we are here on January the 10th, 2019. Joe Hendry is, you know, to dispel some myths, I am a free agent. I always have been a free agent. It is true I have worked with some companies on a contractual basis, but they have never been on an exclusive basis. So I have never been tied down, if you will, to a particular company. I have been, for all intents and purposes, a freelance athlete. Now, at this point in my career, it would have been nice to you know, have the security of a contract with a, a major organization that I can get my teeth stuck into and have a visa and to, you know, be able to perform wherever I want to. Now, what I'm going to do, people, is whilst you do this, while you put these uh, the bits of advice into practice, I'm going to do the same thing because right now I am not in the shape that I need to be in. So when I'm giving you advice about accelerating your training and your diet, I am going to do the exact same things that I'm asking you guys to do. And what I want you to do is look at where my career is right now on the 10th of January 2019 and let's see where it's at in one month, two months, three months, six months, a year and so on. I'm going to tell you exactly how I do it as well. So all the don't you know, I'm not wanting to talk down to anybody when I'm talking about accelerating your training. I'm saying it because I want to relearn it myself and get myself back into that student of the game mentality. They say student of the game for a reason, and that's just where I need to be. So let's think about it. Let's go back to basics. What was working for me? What mindset was working for me in 2013 that maybe isn't working right now? First thing, let's, let's be honest with ourselves. In 2019, the state professional wrestling, there's never been a better time to be an independent wrestler. And that's great because there's more opportunities and more people on contracts than ever before. But at the same time, that also means that the standard is so much higher than it's ever been before. The baseline to even get on shows now is staggering. And you know what? People like myself need to go back to the drum board and constantly reinvent ourselves to keep, at, not just stay at this level, but to get above the level that I'm at. And that's one thing I've learned, folks, is that you always have to look up. You can't think about maintaining your spot. I'm happy where I'm at right now. The second you're happy about being in the spot that you're in is about the time that things start to free fall downwards and you all of a sudden find yourself not having opportunities that you had before, off shows that you were on before and thinking, how has this happened to me? Oh my goodness. And I want to avoid that. So, and the only way I know how is to strive for more. Always strive for more. So, as I say, last time we talked about a reasoning for being a professional wrestler and whatnot, but let's assume that you have found a reputable training school with a trainer who has achieved a lot in your region, wherever that may be, or it might not be your region. You've found a reputable training school and you're going along. Now, something I referred to early on was a book called The Art of War. I'm going to try and pronounce this. I think it's Sun Tzu. 
and this is written just thousands of years ago. I believe it's one of you know it's it's one of the the oldest kind of texts that's still referred to now. But basically, uh, Sun Tzu was a uh, you know widely regarded as the greatest general of that time, and basically he wrote down what he believed to be the art of war. But a lot of people believe that some of those principles uh, are quite relevant to business and to really anything that you want to achieve in today's day and age. And I used those principles to approach professional wrestling. I'm going to tell you how I did that. I'm going to tell you the main mindset and principle that applied to me. It's weird how you can take, let's say both, let's take person A and person B. Both put in the exact same amount of ring time. Because we all know people who have been in the training school for five years without getting any further, 10 years without getting any further. Now, the truth is, they've probably spent the same amount of time as me, if not more, in that training school. But the difference is, it's all about that speed of attack. And what I mean about that, that's that principle from the art of war. I'm not telling you to go and read the art of war, but what I would advise is go and look up the bullet pointed version of it. It will take you five minutes to read and it is it's very interesting indeed. But one of the main principles is when you attack, whether it be in war or, pers- or pursuing one of your goals, you must do it with a relentless speed and intensity. And how I'm applying that here is the person A, let's take myself, who went to training, went to training sessions five plus times a week is going to make more of an impact and learn more than the person who went once a week, but over the course of five, 10 years. It's the same amount of time, but the intensity and of the learning of doing it all within that condensed period of time means so much more. It's fresh in your mind, you're focused, and it's not just about that, it's the people around you start to notice, oh, they're, they're training all the time. So what I will say, folks, is if you are going to do this, you will progress faster if you go to as many training sessions as possible. Now, let's think about this. So let's say if you took, let's just call it a hundred training sessions. I'm telling you, if you crammed them into three months, or there's a person who spread those hundred training sessions by going once a week over two years, who do you think the trainer's Who's going to stick in their mind more? It's going to be the person who's going for three months. And what I'm not saying is, I'm not telling you people to go for three months and then leave. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the principle that you attack this with is this really has to be, you know, for lack of a better term, you have to be all in on this because it's not just good enough to be good at professional wrestling. Everyone is good. You literally have to be good enough, so good that you can drag someone else off the show. I don't mean literally, I mean in the eyes of the promoter. You have to be so good that the promoter goes, I'm not going to book this person I was already booking, I'm going to book this new person because they can offer me this value. Now, when you approach professional wrestling, it's like any other business. When I went to university, I studied business. I've got a master's degree in in business and marketing, and I can tell you what, they could have saved me all the time, and I could have done it in one day if they taught one principle. And that principle is supply and demand. It is literally as simple as that. Supply and demand. If you plot them on a graph, they will meet at a certain point. The supply is how much of something you have to sell, and the demand is what the market wants. You really need to think about yourself. Are you the next Goldberg? Are you that jacked that you can be the next Goldberg? Is that what the market needs right now? Does the market need another high flyer right now? Maybe it does. There's a time there's a time when it did. Does the market need another heavyweight? This is where you can get thinking, where is the gap for me right now? And for someone like myself, I'm thinking, you know what? There is a, don't get me wrong, I'm going to try and improve in all aspects of professional wrestling. I'm going to try and have better matches and stuff like that. But literally, there's no one that can do my entrances the way I do them. So there you go. There's my gap in the market, if, if you understand what I'm saying. So when I got into wrestling, I looked at the supply and demand and I thought there is an abundance of opportunity right now. There's an abundance of shows that are, there's just such a demand for wrestling right now. And I'm looking 
at the the scene at the time, and I'm sorry if I offend anybody, but I'm just going to speak as frankly as possible here. And hey, I like to get a little fat sometimes as well, so I'm not you know throwing anybody under the bus. I'm just being realistic about the situation. Let's just say that in British wrestling, not everybody had you know abs popping through their shirt. You know what I mean? At the time, there was a huge amount of opportunity, and I noticed probably about a quarter of the talent that I'm looking at look like actual professional athletes. So in my mind, I was thinking, right, there's this huge demand for professional wrestling and here's the supply and only a quarter of the supply is living up to that professional look and that professional image. If I can get that, you know, if I can create a professional look, I'm already ahead of this entire section of the talent pool, which is going to put me in front. Here's another uncomfortable truth. That will like, and we'll talk about this more when it in our you know one of our future ones when it when comes to talking about getting bookings. But I'm going to tell you the number one reason that I got booked so much in my first year of wrestling. I was working two or three times every single weekend, which was unbelievable for someone in their first year. And I'm going to tell you why. It is the big magic secret. It is the thing that nobody wants to do for some reason. I do not understand it, but this will get you further. I guarantee it. This will get you further than having a good physique, than being charismatic, than even being good in the ring. This one thing, this one secret, I'm going to tell you will get you booked faster than any of those three things on your on their own as a new trainee. In the comments, I want you to try and guess what I'm talking about. What is the secret thing that if you possess, you're going to get booked? Any ideas? Well, let me tell you what it is. Being able to drive. Being able to drive. That sounds silly. That sounds silly and basic, but most people in professional wrestling, most professional wrestlers cannot drive. Now, if you're a promoter and you've got a show and you want to bring four wrestlers from Scotland down to England, you can either pay four train fares or perhaps you could pay that new trainee who's pretty decent. You know, you wouldn't book them on their own, but if they're willing to bring three other talents and they only, I only have to pay their fuel, maybe I'm going to book them over one of the other workers who might be fantastic in other areas. But in terms of pure logistics, I need this trainee. I have a demand for someone with a car. That trainee is able to supply that demand. That's what I'm talking about. If you can understand the relationship between supply and demand, let's simplify it even further. Let's simplify it even further. Let's talk about what the market wants and what you can give. Think about it like that. When you approach this, you have to, don't get me wrong, you have to stay true to your principles. Like I did, I had an idea of, you know, this character I want to do and this thing and that thing, but I have to mix it with what the market requires. Let's talk about when I got into ICW. When I got into ICW, I watched the show and I noticed every single person was being hardcore and there was chairs and there was swearing and all that. And I says, whoa, whoa, wait a second. These people are hardcore wrestlers. They're doing this. First of all, they're doing a bunch of stuff I'm not willing to do. I don't want to be swearing. I don't want to be bleeding. I don't want to be using weapons. Hey, that's just, it ain't for me. It never has been. And I thought, you know, as a trainee, how can I go in and tell these veterans, I'm not going to do that. Here's how. I decided everyone else, my this is my concept, and I'll tell you right now, I was watching it, and I was watching um, the, the, it was Feed and Loathing, it was my first ICW show, and I was watching the show before my promo was about to air, and I noticed that th there was just, you know, there was uh, Psychodelic, this rock band were playing, I was watching it, the people are going nuts for it, the wrestlers are freaking out, hardcore matches, I'm thinking, <clears throat> what is the opposite of this? And I thought about the type of wrestler, someone else who was influential for me, John Cena. I thought, what would happen if someone like John Cena was in ICW? And that's who I tried to be. Because nobody else on the roster was trying, roster was trying to be that. That's how I made my spot. I did something completely different from everyone else because the supply had already been maxed out for hardcore wrestlers. They had that covered. Whereas I tried to bring something a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'll talk about how to get booked on a different episode, right? And like I say, this is not a exhaustive guide. I can only tell you what worked for me, how I did it, and more importantly, what mistakes I made because I made a hell of a lot of them. The easiest way to not make mistakes as a trainee is to keep your mouth 
shut. Basically, for your first few years of wrestling, you should not even have an opinion. You should have an opinion, but just don't voice it in front of veterans because it's almost like there sometimes I'll be, even me at my level, you know, five years in, I'll be standing there and a trainee will say something to me and I'm just like, ah. Like, I remember, I'll give you an example. I was at a show in Canada and a trainee came up to me and I knew what they were trying to do. They were trying to connect with me and show like, look, I'm on your level. I'm going to use this terminology so I know what you're talking about. And he went, oh, how's the heat, bro? Like referring to me being the prestigious one. It's like, no one, like that's just not even like a phrase. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when someone says that, you immediately think like, what are you talking about? You know? Whereas like, that's already created like this this weird first impression because they were trying to say something cool and to voice an opinion. Trust me, when you're a trainee, your opinion is not going to be what gets you over. Your work ethic is that's going to be what is going to get you over with the veterans and the locker room. You need to let your work do your talking for you. You can express yourself, but wait till you do it in your promos. And hey, I'm talking from experience. I said, you can ask uh, Big Demo, aka Killian Dane and Nikki Cross. And I said a lot of dumb stuff when I started as a trainee. And thankfully, I had people to tell me, eh, maybe you shouldn't be saying that. You know, I made, a, I made a, a few mistakes in the start by being a bit too keen, if you will. But I learned to kind of reel it in a little bit. Don't get me wrong, there's times where you need to be bold, there's times where you need to stick up for yourself, but basically you'll hear this a lot when you're a, tra when you're a trainee, it's basically you've got two ears and one mouth. Try and respect that ratio. So, we've talked about the concept of supply and demand and how that relates to getting booked, but how does it relate to training? How, do, how can what I'm talking about just relate to training? The reason it relates to training is because you have to approach everything with a plan. Okay, so what I've said about getting onto the show, you need to have those goals. If you don't have those goals, you don't have direction. And personally, that's something that I have struggled with recently is not having those goals and not having that direction. I came back from the Commonwealth Games, didn't really know what to do next. Um, World of Sport came up, great. Impact came up, great. You know, I'm now in a point where we've discussed this at length, you know, having some issues with visas and stuff like that. And I'm kind of like, oh, where, what's happening now? What's next for me? What do I do? Um, I don't know exactly what's going to happen in 2019. You know, I think we're trying to figure, uh, trying to sort the visa stuff out, but we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, the only way that I can keep myself sane is to literally look at what responsibility can I take? How can I be undeniable? And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to training. I'm going to go back to training school and I'm going to actively work on my stuff in the ring, not just when I'm wrestling on shows, but also I'm going to actively train in the training school as well as if a prof as a professional athlete would. And it never really should have been any other way, but that's on me, you know? It was, like I say, it was Finn Balor's advice, never stop training, never stop training. And again, the most successful people are the ones who never stop training. You need to, if you want to be a world-class athlete, you need to practice like a world-class athlete. So maybe it's time for me to take a step back from, you know, amateur wrestling and stuff like that. And not saying I'm not going to do it, but this year I feel I really need to focus on pro wrestling. So, uh, we've talked about the intensity of the training. And all I mean by that is, trust me, people, if you go to training more than twice a week, so I'm talking three times a week minimal, if you do that, you are going to be ahead of, let's say, 75% of the people that you are competing against for a spot just by going more than two times a week. Okay? Think about that. You're going to be ahead of 75% of the other people. By going to the gym three times a week, four if you can, five amazing, but three minimum, you're going to be ahead of 75% of the other people doing this. If you eat correctly, you're going to be ahead of 90% of the other people out there because I know this is becoming a bit of Steiner maths here. Let's just forget the percentages. I'm using it to get the point across. But my point is, can you imagine if you took all these things and put them together, because coming up with a character as a trainee that cuts through that's going to be good enough to take an established worker off a show and put you on it is damn difficult. 
But what isn't that difficult? What is what I like to call procedural? And by procedural, I mean something you do not need to think about. You simply just need to do. You need to either get in a car, get on a bus or walk, but you need to make your way to your training school. You need to arrive and you need to do what you're told. That is all you need to do. No intense thought is required in that process. You just need to do your best. And like I say, let's not forget that some of the best in the world have been pretty open about the fact they weren't superstars on their first day of training. CM Punk is a prime example. In his documentary, they say, you know, he wasn't very athletic in his debut. He couldn't do much of the stuff compared to his contemporaries. But he went on to be the most successful because he had that long-term vision and those long-term goals. And he had that character that cut through and he really thought about things and, you know, that's just something I want you to think about as well. You don't need to be the best at something on the first day. Um, you know, when you're at school, when you're just kids, usually natural talent plays a lot, you know, it has a much more of an impact than it would now. But when you're an adult, it's the ones who put in the consistent work over a long period of time are the ones that go on to become most successful. So what I'm looking for people is consistency. It sounds simple, but really step number one is show up. If you simply show up on a regular, consistent basis to your training school, do not make excuses. This has to be religious. This has to be religious, even if it's two times a week. Let's just let you off the hook and say it's two times a week. Tuesday and Thursday or Tuesday and Sunday, whatever the days are, you better be there. There are no excuses. You need to move things around in your life to make room for these things. If you cannot make room for these things, maybe it's time to get a new job. If family's in the way, maybe you need to make other arrangements so you could spend time with your family around this. If that is impossible, then maybe you need to think about, you know, be honest with yourself. What are your priorities? Where are you at in life? Can you prioritize this? Do you want to? What do you really want? If you really want this, and trust me, to be good at this now, you have to want this more than anything because that grit and determination is going to get you through those hard times. But I'm not talking to the people who are thinking this this is a hobby. Because here's the thing about wrestling. I encourage you people to try. And I said that last time. Even if it doesn't go on to become your career, the fact that you went and you tried means that you will not live with that, that one feeling, the only negative that you can take to your grave, which is regret. Even if you just go, you will know whether it was for you or not. When it was me, I knew on my first day of training, this is for me, this is what I'm going to do, and that was that. There are some people who go on their first day of training, we discussed one last week, where a guy who I knew last, at last, on the last episode went on to one training session and very quickly realized it was not for him. That is not a problem, but at least he does not have to go to the grave with regret. So try it. But if it is for you, please understand, your expectations must meet your output of work. Simple as that. If you want to be on shows in the UK at the super high level in one of the best wrestling scenes in the world, or even the US or Canada or Mexico or Japan or anywhere else, wherever you're listening in the world, if you really want to get to that next level, then you must attend training school as often as you can, religiously. I'm just looking at one of the comments there, and someone says, I really want to try it, but there's no schools near me, and my mom says I need to finish college first. Well, I did. I finished college. Well, we call it university. I finished university first, and then I went on to do it, and that worked out for me. That was better for me. You know, when I started, I was like, oh, I wish I'd got into this earlier, but in truth, for me, that was the right time. Because I came into it with a a certain perspective in life. And some people are best when they go into it young. For me, it was better for me to go in with a little bit of life experience. But trust me, having a degree is not the worst thing in the world. Because accelerating your training, it's going to cost a little bit of money. You're going to need to invest in yourself here. You're going to need to get yourself a couple of things. Here's what I recommend. First of all, trace knee pads. This is unbelievable, but I have the same pair of knee pads that I got on my first day of training. They are trace knee pads, and the reason was I saw Ric Flair and AJ Styles using them, and I was like, if they're good enough for Ric Flair and AJ Styles, they're good enough for me. I think they cost me £20, and I've had them since day one. They have lasted five years. They now have two tears at the top of them, so I'm going to replace them this month. 
and I'd probably get a couple of extra pairs to be honest with you but I have what that pair has carried me through for £20. So get Trace knee pads. Don't scrimp and save on cheaper ones. Get those because they will last a lifetime. And also for the sake of your colleagues, please wash them after training sessions because that is actually a huge problem. Um, people you know, not maintaining basic hygiene is a problem in, uh, in training schools, certainly. Um, so remember to wash the clothes that you're training in. So you want to get Trace knee pads. Um, I've said this before, I said this on the Impact stream the other night, but what you want to do, again, Sean has asked, where do you get boots or shoes, etc.? My advice is go on Amazon um, or a compatible site, you know, preferably not Amazon because they don't treat their workers very well, but uh, hey-ho. Um, but Amazon is an option, it is one I use. Um, you can go on there and you can get, my advice would be, again, look at what the best in the business use. A lot of them use, you know, different brands, but the one I always see is Asics. Asics wrestling shoes. Asics amateur wrestling shoes. Now, I will warn you, I can't remember which it is, but do a little bit of research on the sizing because they're either a size too big or a half a size too big or half a size too small. So my feet are a nine and a half, and I think I either had to get 10 or a nine. I think it was, I had to get a 10, um, but they are, they're quite tight but they're tight for a reason because they need to be to protect your feet. But Asics wrestling shoes and trace knee pads should be your first purchase. Aside from that, you want to get a pair of shorts and um, probably like that nylon kind of material, either Nike or Umro, or it doesn't really matter the brand, just that material that gives you some freedom of movement. So, you know, if you need to lift your legs up for some reason, they're not, you're not going to tear your shorts or anything like that. You need something that's got a little bit of stretch to it. And um, so we're so far, the Asics shoes, let's budget ourselves. Uh, now, a lot of people get the Lonsdale ones, the Lonsdale boxing boots. I'm going to suggest you don't get that because everybody has those and they actually fall to bits pretty quickly because they're, they're in Sports Direct and they're cheap. If you have to, start with them, okay? But I'm telling you now, the impression you're going to make with Asics shoes is going to be worth the, the extra investment. I've actually just seen a comment there about the Lonsdale boxing boots. Um, so don't uh, worry about wrestling gear in training. That is not an issue yet. Uh, but like I say, get yourself the Trace knee pads, get yourself the Asics wrestling shoes and do a bit of research on whether you need to get half a size too big or too small. Um, and then the next thing you're want to, going to want to do, this is a very important one, people, and one that very few people um, seem to grasp. Do not... I repeat, do not wear a wrestling t-shirt to your first day of wrestling practice. And the reason is because I hate to say that because we're all fans. You know what I mean? We are all fans. But you're going to, and I'm speaking from experience, I have said cringy things in practice to people who have been teaching a seminar when I was in my first few months of training who I now wrestle on a regular basis. Um... You don't want to act like a fanboy or fangirl or fan whatever in your uh, in your training environment. You won't see be able to see that now, but in retrospect, uh, you you may regret that. So, for example, do not show up to training with a t-shirt of your favorite wrestler. Think about this as if you were trying out for a sports team. That's how you need to think about it. The sports team being the professional wrestling show that you're trying to get on. You know, if I went to a WWE tryout, I'm not going to wear a WWE t-shirt. I'm not going to be a fanboy about it. I'm going to dress like a professional because I'm a professional athlete. Think to yourself, what would, you know, what would professional athletes wear for a professional tryout in another sport? You know what I'm saying? So it's just a bit, a little thing. Again, I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm just telling you if you wear kind of, you know, prof nice sports clothes, you can go to Primark or somewhere like like that and you can get you know good sports vests or good sports t-shirts and things like that for five pounds so you can get a decent one of those for five pounds from pre-marks so that's five pounds same deal for the shorts you know what let's go a little bit overboard let's increase the budget just to make sure we got it here so 10 pounds for a nice nylon-y type shirt 10 pounds for the same material as shorts and that's 20 pounds you got 20 pounds for the trace knee pads they're a little bit more expensive online now so let's call them 40 pounds right so there you go, that's £60, and then a little bit left over for your, your Asics shoes. So to have to be really looking the part on your first day. So Sean says, can I wear a football shirt? Um, 
they are the fancy type that are made for sports. I, you can. It wouldn't be my recommendation. It wouldn't be right my recommendation because you're there to for serious business. Because what I want you people to realize is it kind of depends what you want to get out of professional wrestling. If you see this as nothing more, a compression top is perfect. I've just seen that in the in the comments. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Compression top shows that you are here to do business, especially if you're in great shape. If you're not in great shape, then just get a baggy sports t-shirt, something like that. It at the end of the day, this isn't a huge thing. I'm just trying to discourage when you think about this. Think, am I going there to because I one day you need to go in with the intention of one day being a professional brand that people are, are going to part money with to book you on a show to buy your t shirts? To me, I'm not going to show up to when I did Good Morning Britain, I'm not going to show up and wear a Kurt Angle t shirt or wear a Dwayne Johnson t shirt because they were wrestlers I looked, looked up to. No, I need to go out there and I need to be my own brand. I need to do my own thing. Even though I look up to these people and I'm a great fan of those people and that, you know, they're what got me on, into the business, I need to go there and I need to be a professional athlete. So, just seeing another comment says, is there a certain limit to how many attempts you can have at wrestling training if you have to leave during it, for example, due to not enough funds? That's a very good question, a very good question. There's something that, ha that happened to me. I was broke as you like when I started pro wrestling. I had nothing to my name and several thousand pounds in debt. It was a scary time, but for some reason I wasn't scared because I just I found a way. You know what I'm saying? Anyth everything else could fall by the wayside, but for me, with professional wrestling training, you find a way. Here's my advice if you don't have enough money for professional wrestling training. Remember what we said about you've got person A, who went to, you know, let's say they put in 100 hours of training over the course of two years, which might be that situation you're talking about, Nick, which is, you know, you have to leave and then you have to come back and da 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 da, da. And then on the other side, you've got the person who was there every day for three months, and then, oh my God, they're already on shows and the ball's already rolling, okay? So let's say person B, who's put that intense amount of time on, they've already gotten shows. I'm not saying it's three months. For me, I waited 10 months to go on shows because I wanted to make a huge impact when I debuted. But let's say if you can get through that initial period and actually get on shows, if I'm already out there as a professional wrestler, like I say, I would the mistake I made is to stop training you know, after a while and just go, well, I'm doing my matches, I'm doing my amateur wrestling and stuff like that. Um... You know, if you do, I wouldn't recommend you do that. I'd recommend you continue to train. But worst comes to worst, if you run out of money, person B has done enough to get themselves booked. They can, you know, they, so they can do those shows. The shows might earn them a little bit of extra cash, but it's not the end of the world. And I've been there personally as a pro wrestler. I was broke as hell at certain points after, you know, my first few years of training. But if I'd have done it in kind of, oh, well, I'm going for a month and I'm taking a month off and then I'm going back and blah, 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 blah. Eh, it's not going to happen. My, uh, you would be better off putting money aside and then knowing that you can commit to this for a year. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. This is not easy. You know, going to university isn't cheap. It's the similar sort of deal. This really is something that you have to properly invest in. So my advice would be, if you're saying to me, Joe, I can't even save because look, we've all been in that spot. You wouldn't believe how often I've been in that spot. Even, you know, in recent years, there's been certain times where I've been in this spot. Fortunately, now I'm a full-time professional wrestler and, you know, broadcaster and I get to do this stuff and I'm hugely privileged. And somewhere along the way, I lost a certain amount of gratitude for that, you know? And now I'm trying to make up to myself. I'm trying to work harder. Maybe I took that a little bit for granted, but now I'm trying to make amends by doing this podcast for you guys and to relearn it myself, how I can get back in and how I can put my own ass on the line and improve. But anyway, I digress. All I'm saying is I empathize with your situation. I empathize with the people out there that don't have the funds to do it. Let's, for argument's sake, say you don't have the funds to do it. I'm going to give you my own example. I'm sitting here right now in this room. Look at these consoles behind me. Dreamcast, N64, GameCube, Mega Drive, PS2, SNES Classic, Gibson SG over there. I'm not saying every person has all of those things. But what I am saying is you probably have one or two of those kicking around. Now, if I sell that guitar over there, I'm going to be able to sell that for 500 pounds. 
guitars actually hold their value extremely well, believe it or not. I'm not saying you don't invest in guitars, but I'm just saying, there you go. Right now, I'm going to tell you right now, I've got um, a wrestling encyclopedia right there. I've got uh, a printer right there that I do use, but if I had to get part ways with it, I could. I've got a few Nintendo Switch games there. I've got a second monitor there. I've got um, some Final Fantasy VII old action figures from when I was a kid over there. I've got a Tony Robbins book right there. The point is, I'm listing all these things. There's a, there's a pop there. I'm listing all these things because what I've just listed are non-essential items. Which if I, believe it or not, the things I've just listed, all of those things, if we were smart about it, we could get several hundred pounds for. So again, Nick's respondent said, the problem is I've tried wrestling training twice, but due to funds I've had to leave it, now I have a job and I have money to properly go for it, but I'm worried they won't take me back and that's sort of my chance gone to waste kind of thing. Nick, if you explain your situation and they're telling you you can't come back because of that, then maybe it's time to move on, my friend, because let me tell you, there's plenty of other training schools out there that would want someone like yourself who has made the sacrifice, gone to earn the money to come back. If you struggle with that, if you struggle with that, my friend, go on my Discord. Someone post the Discord link for him. Go on the Discord and me and my community will make sure that we get you in touch with a training school that's near enough to you that you can do your thing. Here's the thing, people. I'm here to help. We are not going to leave you stranded here. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is with this podcast series because not only am I going to do these things myself, but I'm going to answer your questions as we go on my Discord. We might start a Facebook group, stuff like that. But I'm going to tell you guys where I went wrong so you don't have to to make the mistakes that I do. But Nick, my advice is just go for it. If they don't accept you, someone else will. If they don't, contact us on the Discord and we'll put you in touch with someone who will help you. But like I say, just to get back to where I was, what I did is I listed non-essential items. Now, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to go on eBay and sell a Tony Robbins book for a fiver or sell a in wrestling encyclopedia for a tenner. Or sell that printer that cost me 60 quid for 20 quid. But you know what? That's going to carry me through wrestling for another week. That's going to carry me through wrestling for another two weeks. These things here are going to pay for my professional wrestling training for a few months. This thing right in the corner here is going to pay for my professional wrestling training for the year. Who knows? I'm just saying I know not everybody has these things in their house. But you have something. Again, if you want to make extra money, there's a series that Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk does where he literally goes into bargain stores, like if you're in the UK, for like B&M and stuff like that, pound shops, has a little scanner, literally just on this app, scans it, and it says, that thing there lists on eBay for this, that thing lists for this, and all you do is you go in, you scan things, and you find something where there's a huge discrepancy where, oh, actually in the bargain store, they're being sold for one pound, whereas on eBay, they're being listed for for five pounds. I'm going to buy 10 of those. And there you go. I've made 40 quid profit, that sort of thing. That's what I'm saying. There are extra ways to make money. Just most people don't want to do it. But if you want it bad enough, you will find a way. Maybe it's doing a second job. Maybe it's doing pizza deliveries, whatever it is. I've said this before. There is absolutely no shame in a hard day's work. But the main thing is you need to to have that intensity of your training. You cannot take weeks off and you know, months off unless it's for a legitimate injury or a serious family reason that you need to take time off. You must commit to doing this. So um, Nick's responded saying he's based in Aberdeen. Um, he's, he's named the training school, asked if they can talk and have another chance. Based on the school that you've named there, Nick, I'm confident they will give you another chance. If they do not, come and speak to me. I can maybe have some conversations on your behalf. No no trainee will be left behind in this podcast series. Trust me on that. I am truly defiant, says I have plenty of things that I can sell to fund mine as well as a salary from work. Now, let me tell you this, right? That thing in the corner there, that Gibson SG, if I had to sell that, that would break my heart. But I would do it if it meant that I had to do it to get to the next level in my career. You know what I'm saying? Like last, I'll give you an example. Like a few weeks ago, I, I sold my Nintendo 3DS, right? I didn't n need to, but you know, in order for me to pay the bills and be comfortable that month, I was like, you know what? I bought a little too much for Christmas. I need to get rid of something. I'm not saying that's in the same vein, but what I'm saying is 
you'd be surprised how little you miss your old stuff that you don't really use that much anymore. You know what I'm saying? So look around your house, look around the room. There's things that you can get rid of that you can put on eBay that you can sell and get rid of to fund your training. So we've discussed now, how are we going to fund our training? We've discussed you're going to have that intensity of training because I've told you that by even just showing up, you're already going to be light years ahead of the competition. That work ethic is there, but now let's think of the components that go towards making you a bookable entity. Now, as well as, you remember when I mentioned earlier about being able to drive? Let's not forget that not only does that now mean you can go in shows, that means you have access to seminars that other people cannot go to. And remember what I said last time, in the last month, there have been seminars in the UK by Marty Jones, Johnny Saint, and Dave Taylor. Two of those are WWE trainers. You know what I'm saying? And you can, you have access to them right now for probably about 20, 25 pounds and some fuel. That's insane. But it is so strange. I go to, I've gone to a lot of these seminars in the past and I look around and there's not as many people there that there should be there. Take advantage of these opportunities if you drive. Accelerate your training because here's the other thing that you need to be aware of. When you're in the training school, you're going all the time, but guess what? You are going to learn a specific style of wrestling, most likely, that is suited to your training school. As we said last time, PBW in Scotland has a very different style to the trainees from Source. If you look at Kenny Williams and Noam Dar, they're one style of wrestler, and then you can look over at the other end and you look at the Coffee Brothers and myself, and it's like, it's not saying that one's right or that one's wrong. Because, you know, everybody's doing well for themselves, but they're, they're different styles. So I would advise you, you, join a training school and be aware of the politics. You know, you don't want to kind of rub it in your trainer's face that you're going to another school. But your trainer should have absolutely zero problems with you taking seminars at other schools, which you should do. You should try and get in the ring with as many different people as possible whilst being careful to protect yourself. While we're on the podcast here, I do want to just say thank you very much to I Am Truly Defiant and... Uh, Joe, who has just uh, both subscribed. That is super appreciated, and that certainly goes towards helping us to do this series. Another good question there. I'm truly defined to ask, would martial arts be of help for your training? Well, for me, I can speak in my experience. I said that nothing really came easily to me, but that was a kind of a cheat answer. The reason I said that is because of this. When I started professional wrestling, I did take to that like a duck to water. I took to it very quickly, but the reason is, is because I had my black belt in judo before I ever set foot in that source wrestling school. So I knew how to fall. I knew how to bump, basically. I knew how to do rolls. I knew what it was like to be in a real fight. You know what I'm saying? So I always feel that, you know, people can be critical of my matches and whatnot, but I've always felt that my stuff looks legit because I know what it's like. I compete legitimately on a regular basis. That's the point that I'm making. So if you can get a background in grappling, if that, I would seriously recommend that. Because as I said, it, it will also give you a different flavor to everyone else in that training school. Because one of the issues of training a training school nonstop is, like I say, you will develop a style and it will be similar to a lot of the people in that school. That's not, again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a style, but it's very nice to have your own approach to that. Maybe you do judo and so like Ronda Rousey does, so you can do interesting throws. Maybe it's jujitsu and you know some cool holds. Maybe it's amateur wrestling. You can do various roles and things like that. You know, maybe it's gymnastics. Maybe maybe it's dancing. Maybe it's it's whatever it is, people. If you have some sort of other physical sport under your belt, that is only going to help you. So absolutely go in with that. But let's say you're starting professional wrestling. I digress a little bit that a little bit there. But we've made the point you need to be going all the time. You need to go to different seminars. Ideally, you can drive by this point. But the main point is you're showing up each and every week and you're doing what's asked of you. But here's the thing. So are a lot of other people. How do we then take it to the next level? How do we then accelerate our training? How do we learn quickly? Well, the first thing that we want to do is, like I say, we always need to have a vision. We need to have a goal. We need to know what kind of wrestler we want to become. And again, it's remembering who got us into wrestling. Now, for me, it's a bit of The Rock. It's a little bit of 
it's a little bit of The Rock, it's a little bit of Kurt Angle, it's a little bit of Ric Flair, some Chris Jericho, you know, these are my influences and I'm, I'm missing out a lot of people, but as, as well as that, I like, you know, the old stuff like Marty Jones and Billy Robinson, and I like to take all of that and mix it in with a little bit of the legit stuff, and that's me making my style, you know? Now, you're not going to be a polished professional wrestler in the start, but it's good to have that vision and know, right, I'm going to do all these moves, but I'm going to also ask my trainer, you know, and this is not at the start, by the way, because moves at the start don't matter at all. Really, what you're trying to learn is basically the movements, the footwork. So you really want to know how to move around a ring. You want to know how to do rolls. You want to know how to do various drills. You want to know how to get up properly, how to bump, how to pin somebody, how to walk around the ring. Basic things. Basics, basics, basics. As I've said before, you look at the best of all time in any endeavor and it always comes down to a ruthless execution of the basics. It always comes down to that. Jeff in the comments says he used to, his dad was a wrestler in WCW and used to spend his childhood at the power plant. Jeff, we'd certainly be, uh, we'd love to hear your, uh, your stories on that. That'd be super interesting. That's something I like to look back on, you know, whether it be, uh, through reading about it, hearing from Chael Sonnen, or from even the Louis Theroux documentary. It's a very interesting time in professional wrestling. But anyway, I digress once again. So, like I say, you're going off, and now we need to think about, now we're at the training school, how can we progress as quickly as possible? Well, like I say, you always must be training with your mind and thinking about what type of wrestler do I want to be. Another thing that people will not do, though, is they likely won't be practicing their promos in their own time. And this is something that you can actually practice without ever having to be at the training school. There's no worry of safety or things like that. You can just do do. You can just be at home in front of the mirror. You can film it on your phone. You can practice your promos. And they don't need to be the greatest promos in the world to start off with. You just need to get started. Sean asks about how about thinking of a name. Again, for me, we had all these ideas of what name I could use. And believe it or not, I got a WWE tryout in my first year. I had a WWE tryout before I had a singles match. And we will cover that in detail on a separate episode because the level of pressure was quite unbelievable. And that's one of the things I'm proudest of is that I handled that pressure and I stepped up to the plate when I maybe didn't think it was possible. But that is a hell of a lot of pressure for someone to have. But at that time, we were thinking, right, what do I call myself? And they said, look, you might get signed. You might not get signed. There is no point coming up with a name right now and then having to change it, da, da, da. just go with your real name and see what happens. And then I went with my real name and then basically I ended up getting booked quicker than I thought after that as well. And then here we are. We just went off to the races with it. And it was too late to change it. So my real name is my wrestling name and that's why. Obviously I got the prestigious one, the local hero, but that is how it happened. So right now, just when you're training, you don't even need to worry about that right now. You can think about it, but it really should be... I'm not the best person to give advice to this because I don't necessarily think that the best names in wrestling for me are like The Rock, Stone Cold, Undertaker, Triple H, Hulk Hogan. Not necessarily Joe Henry, but here we are, you know? Um, something you can, a name is just a name at the end of the day. You can make it work. You know what I'm saying? So, um, we can come on to that. that we'll, we'll discover, we'll go over that in more detail. Uh, we'll, we'll go over that in more detail on a later episode because right now we're really just talking about how to accelerate your training. Um, Dan is asking, may I ask if it's possible for me to do wrestling even though I've got a heating aid or it's not possible? Doctors say I can't wrestle but my dream is to be a wrestler. Again, Dan, I don't want to overstep the line and tell you to do something that a doctor is telling you you cannot do. I think you should always seek medical advice. Uh, again, we will cover this in a different episode. We talked about it a little bit last time. Some people do have medical issues. There is always a place for people in the business. Um, then again, though, I was told due to the condition that my leg was in when I broke it as a young man, uh, my leg was broken so badly um, at my ankle joint, it was called, it was like a spiral fracture and my foot was facing the wrong way around. I was told that I would never do sports professionally. And after that, I'm doing professional wrestling, two-time British champion in amateur wrestling, and I competed at Commonwealth Games in a sport that I hadn't even started at that point. So doctors say some stuff. 
Um, but that being said, you need to be cleared by them to before you get into the training school. I'm just saying, long term, you can defy what medical experts may think you'll be able to do, but you need to be cleared by a doctor. Like I had to get the plate taken out of my leg surgically before I really pushed forward and pursued uh, professional wrestling. So, uh, but we can get more into that another day. Again, once again, it's so difficult to digress people. I just go on and on and on, but that's why you're here, right? So um, you're, you're going to train regularly. Um, you need to stand out now and you need to accelerate your training. You need to learn as quickly as possible. And really the main thing is just showing up as often as possible. I wish, it, I wish it, there was some secret answer, but that really is it. You need to go as often as possible. You need to visit training seminars when they become available. But now what you also must do, and this is something that I am now having to embrace. I didn't want to, but now I'm having to embrace it is that my physique is not good enough. My physique is not where it needs to be. And I now need to approach changing my body as a sport. And I hate the gym. I absolutely despise the gym. I hate it. I hate going every second I'm there, every rep I'm doing, I'm, I hate it. And I realize, how can I be great at something I hate? How can I be great at something that makes me miserable. And then I realize I need to change my thinking. So the next thing you need to do alongside your professional wrestling training is you need to do training outside of your training at the professional wrestling school. That's going to help you with some cardio and stuff like that. But you need to be, listen to me folks, training weights three times a week at a minimum. If you are not training three times a week minimum and going to the training school minimum twice a week, do you deserve to take my spot off a show? Do you deserve to take the trainee over here who is doing all these things? Do you deserve to take their spot off a show? No, you do not. And it's as simple as that. If you're okay with that, if you just enjoy training, then that is fine. But that's not what this podcast is about. This podcast is about accelerating your training. And in order to do that, you need to be going off into professional wrestling training and you need to be doing that, but you also need to be backing it up in the gym as well. Now, here's the difficult part. A lot of you won't be able to afford a personal trainer. I was very fortunate in that a guy called Ross Brain, who is a phenomenal sports uh conditioning, strength and conditioning expert. He runs Edinburgh University Gym. I don't know why, but this is one of the kindest things another human being has ever done. I explained to him, I knew him through, his his brother was in a band with me. And uh, I said to him, I want to learn how to weightlift. And he basically said to me, I told him what I wanted to do. I wanted to try and get a WWE tryout. And I, don't, I even was talking about tryouts before I even started training. That's what I'm talking about, folks. You know, Conor McGregor talks about, you know, putting things out there in the universe and they happen. I was a great believer of that. I put it out there that I'm going to get a WWE tryout. I actually told my family I'm going to get a tryout on my second week of training. I don't know why I told them that. I just told them that's what I'm going to achieve. And in my first year of training, before I even had a singles match, it happened. I have to say I do believe to some extent about that law of attraction thing. You can put it out there. You don't need to put it out there publicly, but discuss it with your friends and family. Really think about it. Have those goals in your mind. You need to be thinking about what it is that you want to achieve. But like I say, Ross Brain, I told him what my goals were. I wanted to WWE train. He says, I'll train you for it. And he's one of the most sought after personal trainers in, in the United Kingdom. Sorry, my dog's going crazy here too, sir. Sorry, my dog is uh, super excited about his squeak toy there. And as am I excited, but he's going to have to wait until after the podcast. I will, ha I will do a separate podcast, an hour and a half of my dog on a squeaky toy. But today will not be that day. Um, thank, you for, uh, <laughs> thank you for your patience, folks. Um, so where were we? Yeah, so, he, so I don't know why, but he offered to train me. And he was basically, he's one of the most sought after personal trainers in the entire United Kingdom. He probably, I don't even know what he costs, but he showed me how to lift weights properly. The proper technique didn't charge me a penny. You might see some of his montage footage, actually, in my uh, Road to Angle, I think it was called. It's a documentary that we did for 
me preparing to face Kurt Angle. And in the scene where I'm like lifting weights and throwing kegs around and all that, that was Ross. We went back to see Ross and he trained me again and didn't take a penny off me. I was lucky. But what I'm trying to say here, people, is I found someone who I didn't have the money, so I found someone who taught me how to lift weights. If you don't have the money to do it, ask people. If you don't have the money to do it, look online. Like right now, I, t I said to you, I, my physique is not what it needs to be. Now, let's be honest, folks. There are a lot of people who take shortcuts, okay, who use performance-enhancing substances, banned substances. I'm not doing that. I've said that. Nothing against anybody that does. It's just not for me. So the reason I'm telling you guys that is I don't want you to go down that route, okay? I want you to keep it clean and keep it natural. And there are a variety of reasons, both health and mental, that I'm going to explain to you why I think that you should do that. But that's something I've always done. And I want to prove what's possible with a natural physique. There are some there are some athletes there who are open about the fact that they're, they're natural athletes. And I support that 100%. Um, but that's one of the reasons I need to bust my ass now because I'm 30 years old. I'm going to be 31 this year. And as you know, your natural testosterone levels go down at that sort of age. So now I need to stay a step ahead of the game and I need to improve my diet and my exercise even more so that I can even just maintain the level I'm at, but the level I'm at is not good enough. So what I am going to do and what I have been doing is this is what I want you to do. For strength and conditioning, I want you to go online and I want you to type in Arnold Schwarzenegger, training for mass. I understand Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to have various, you know, advantages that, that I don't have access to. We're not going to get into details, but, you know, you can use your powers of deduction to understand what I'm talking about. It's We're talking about a different style of bodybuilding here. Mine's going to be, I'm going to have a little bit more of a difficult road. But Arnold Schwarzenegger, technique-wise and knowledge-wise, is the master. He is the, there is no one better in my opinion. There's no one who knows more than he does about what it takes to build the ultimate physique. So like I said, I'm going to do it clean, but I'm going to follow his exact advice when it comes to the techniques of, of weightlifting and his, and the diet and stuff like that. But watch this. It's, um, this series that he does. It's, I can't remember. It's like half an hour long, but he basically says, this is the exercise routine. And here are the he says, here are the weightlifting exercises I did on the first day of training to the last day of training. These are the basics, the ones that worked for me. And this is what I'm learning. And this is how I'm getting excited about bodybuilding. I tried his arm workout that I went to the gym the other day. And I, for the first time in ages, I was buzzing because I was like, and I mean, you know, I feel these arms are looking pretty jacked right now compared to how they looked the week before. And um, it really worked for me. You know, and now I've been at the gym. Uh, today was a, not a rest day, I went for a run today, so it was active recovery. But I've been in the gym more because I'm excited now, because I'm employing these new techniques. So what I want you to do is I want you to watch that series, um, the Arnold Schwarzenegger series. Not only watch that, there's a Blueprint series as well. They're, these are all on YouTube for free. Just Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the brand is Muscle Farm. Okay, and it's farm is spelled P-H-A-R-E. M, I believe. Um, they're kind of an MMA nutrition brand as well, but they did stuff with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He basically breaks down everything that you need to know. And I'm talking about the, the exercises, the, the set, the number of sets you need to do, the stuff you need to be eating, the mentality that you need to have when you're in the gym. He breaks it down way better than I ever could. And that's what I'm going to do on this series. If I find something, a resource that is more informed than me on something, I'm not going to sit here and BS you about world-class bodybuilding. I'm going to say, don't talk to me. Go listen to that guy because he's going to give you the better advice so you can get all that knowledge for free and don't just watch it once i'm watching that stuff a couple of times a week just to keep it fresh before i did legs yesterday i watched that again but the legs portion of it because i was like right he did that that, and that so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to do that stuff but here's the other thing what i want you to do is i want you to this is the tough part this is a non-negotiable one as well if you're going to lift heavyweights, you need to do it safely. Because like I've said before, if you drop uh, a bar on your head with weights on it, that could be the end of you. You need a personal trainer or a friend or someone you know who's very knowledgeable about weightlifting to do a workout with you, okay? So this might cost you. It might cost you £100 divided over three or four sessions. But basically what you need to do is there are, let's call, let's say... For me, I break it down like this, okay? So there's, and again, I uh, take a lot of influence from uh, Matt Cross when it came to, he kind of 
helped me out with some ideas because before, you know, like say Arnold Schwarzenegger talks about these bigger muscle groups, but Matt Cross had an interesting idea about isolating muscle groups. But based on his advice and, you know, other people, I've kind of broken it down like this. So you've got divide it into individual days don't go to the gym and just go to the gym and lift stuff only work one body part every time that you're in the gym and it works out like this chest so you're talking about your bench press your dumbbell press back you're talking about deadlifts your pull downs you got arms or I divide it into biceps and triceps at the advice of Matt Cross. It really works for me. But a lot of people just do arms and they do what's called supersetting, which is they'll do biceps and then they'll do triceps. So you can look at the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, video and see which ones he does there. Um, so you've got that. You've got your shoulders, which is like your shoulder pressing and things like that. You've got, uh, so what do we say? We said chest, legs, back, shoulders. You've got your arms. And I'm going to start adding in abs as well. Abs is something that I need to work on because I've got a, a dad bod belly, unfortunately. And a lot of it I found out was due to posture. Again, through watching the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing, he says the best way to lose your belly fat is to stand straight against the wall and practice standing up straight. I'm doing it right now. I'm slouching. Look at the difference. That's me sitting up straight. That's me slouching. Look at the difference. Again, I'm just calling myself on it right now. Look how much better my physique is right now. Just by, just by sitting up. There you go. Isn't that crazy? One of the reasons is because the way the mic's positioned and uh, you need to be able to see my face, of course. But um, that's one of the things I'm doing. I'm standing up against the wall, whereas before, I just didn't have the motivation to do these things. Like, I didn't feel grateful to be on shows. I didn't feel grateful to have these things. And it just took a moment for me to go, what the hell, Joe? You, this is, you're doing your dream job. You're you're. You're able to do this full time and you're not cherishing every moment that you have to improve and get better. So right now, people together, me and you, we are going to kick 2019's ass, okay? We are going to absolutely destroy this year and we are going to all achieve our goals. And I'm going back. I'm going, You remember that song by Weezer, Back to the Shack? That is the mood that I'm in right now. We're going back to the drawing board and I'm going to forget all the things I've done and I'm going to become a trainee again, at least in here. I'm going to have my experience, but I'm going to approach things with a level of humility and learning and constantly taking it in, right? So there's the, the, the workout side of things. So watch the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing and you go to a personal trainer and you or a friend who knows and you say, I need a chest workout. I need one chest workout and take notes and even get them to film you or ask, can I film you doing that one second? Get the chest workout, get the back workout, get the arms workout, get the shoulders workout, get that. I can't remember the ones I said, you know, chest, legs, back, arms, shoulders, get those five done. All right. Those five training sessions, you could probably get a deal from a personal trainer for £100, pounds, £120, pounds, no more than £150. Pounds. Get those five sessions and just be honest with them and say, I want five sessions and I want you to show me these movements. No BS, that's what I want. I want an hour each on these movements. That's what I want. Take notes, film it as you go along. In that time, all you need to know is you need to know safely how to lift. Now, basically, what you're going to want to be doing is what... what Basically, find out what your max repetition is. So let's say we're doing chest, for example. We're doing chest, we're doing uh, we're doing bench press, okay? So you're going to warm up with just the bar. You're going to do, I do 20 reps of that. And then I'm going to put a plate on either side. But if it's your first time, put five kilos on either side and work up to that. You do a little bit of that, warm up again. And what you want to do is you want to keep going on, put a little bit of weight on, put a little bit of weight on until you can do one and no more. There must be some, when you start doing this, there must be a training partner who can catch it if you start to drop it. Because let me tell you, folks, I've been stuck under that bar with 145 kilos on it, and I'm the only person in the gym. And that was scary as hell, and I'll never do it again. But I'll tell you what, I managed to push it up because I had to. But don't put yourself in that situation. Have a training partner if you're just trying this out. But find out what your max repetition is. So for me right now, my absolute max that I can bench press is like 140, 145. 140 kilos, 145 kilos. So what I'm going to do for repetitions is I'm going to do maybe 115, 100, absolute max 120 kilos. Now I'm going to do one two, three, okay, so actual speed is basically going to be like one, two, and so on to five. Let me rack it up. We take, because we're doing five by fives, that's like kind of strength training. I'm going to wait two minutes, and then I'm going to do my next set, and I'm going to do five by five. 
let's just think about it. Call the Booker T worker. Think about that. Five by five. All right. So that's a really basic way to start. So basically, you can do five. When I started, I was training for mass. So I did eight eight repetitions, three, three or four sets of eight repetitions. But as I said, there's experts out there. You just need enough to get started. Sean's posted, uh, you know, he's interested in getting started in Pure Gym. That's definitely an option. Um, I was with Pure Gym for a long time. I'm considering going back just for the, the hours and stuff like that. It's actually an excellent gym for the price. And you can go at any time you like. And as Sean says, it starts at $16.99. Dan's asking how many times a week do you go to the gym? I'm going to start going four or five times a week, plus my cardio training, plus my matches. However, I will be honest with you, I have got by on two or three in the past at certain times. On average, it's three to four. That's not right. It should be four to five if I want to be at that upper level. At times, I have survived on two to three. Again, this is not right, but I am just being honest what I have survived on. When, If you look at me on World of Sport or when I debuted in Impact, that was probably the best shape that I've been in in some time. Also, the Kurt Angle match, I was in pretty good shape. That's when you're talking four or five times plus running in the morning as well and stuff like that. But folks, absolutely natural physique. That is kind of what's possible as a natural athlete. But again, I'm learning more about it now. My biceps are killing me because I watched the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. But unfortunately for you, it breaks down, or fortunately for that matter, it breaks down again. Remember when I said you've got your your in-ring work, you've got your look, and you've got your um, your charisma, those three elements? It's the same thing with training for your physique. Within your look, you've got another three elements. Guess what? Your training is only one of them. Your training is only one of them. It breaks down into these three elements. Your tr- the quality of your training, the quality of your sleep, and most importantly, the quality of your diet. You really want to be getting, if you can, okay, a gra- you want to aim for a gram of protein for every pound of body weight. So for me, I weigh about 220 pounds. According to Arnold Schwarzenegger, I should be getting 220 pounds of, uh, 220 pounds, that would kill me, 220 grams of protein a day. That's a little much for me. I I was, again, used to get by on about 100 grams, but that's maybe why I wasn't as defined. So now I'm having it up it. I'm trying to get 200 grams. Like before I came onto this podcast, I've had, uh, you know, split into five meals. I've been having, trying to get in five meals of 40 grams of protein. It is very expensive, folks. I understand that. It's very difficult. One of the cheapest ways to do it, believe it or not, is something called pork crunch. All right. You'll find it in the supermarket. They come in bags of 35 grams. But for some god unknown reason, they have twice the protein of chicken. So if you're struggling to get your protein in that you have, basically, if you have two bags of that, you've got like your six, 20, you've got like 50, 60 grams of protein right there before you've done anything else. That's for a couple of quid and that's getting you starting. If you're, most of you guys will get more than enough on a hundred grams of protein. Again, I'm not a dietary expert, but we will do a separate episode when I'll probably speak to someone who is an expert on how to get your diet right. But I just want you to get thinking about when it comes to your physique, it's really your training. You need an excellent diet that supports that because it is kind of, it's like, honestly, I swear it's like, it's like, I would say it's like 50% diet, 30% training. 20% 20% quality of your sleep. And that's what will make up your physique within your look. So basically, within the accelerating your training, we've talked about how just going more is going to accelerate your training beyond anyone else. Being able to drive is going to accelerate your being able to go to seminars beyond everyone else. We've now discussed you're going to go and watch that Arnold Schwarzenegger series uh, that he did with Muscle Farm called um, Training for Mass, or there's the Blueprint series. Watch them all. Watch the film... Uh, Pump and iron. Because like I said, I hated the gym before, but now I have forced myself to become a fan of bodybuilding. So when I go to the gym, I enjoy it. And ladies and gentlemen, I have found that is the key. 
creating, making yourself enjoy it by getting into it, by embracing it. This is something I'm going to have to do. I might as well absolutely love this. Please watch the film Pumping Iron. But most importantly, if you could only watch one thing, watch the Arnold Schwarzenegger training for mass series. I think it's 16 minutes or something like that. And if you're serious about this, it will be the best 16 minutes that you've ever spent because we've been over this before, people, but your most valuable asset is your time. So we've talked about you're going more often, that's valuable, you got, you've got learned to drive, but you know what, learning to drive right now, that's more to do with getting booked. So right now you just need to show up as often as possible, but we've talked about the intensity of training. You're not going to spread this over going once or twice a week for two years, you're going to go as often as you can for that condensed period of time. You know, that's what's going to get you over more. And don't stop training as well. Uh, but like I'm saying, it's it's just I'm using that as an example. The person who goes more often has more of an impact, in the, even if it's in a shorter space of time. People remember me as the guy who was there every time, even though that lasted for, you know, just over a year. And then it kind of tailed down after that. But people remember me for that. Whereas I know people who are still in the training school, who haven't got past the training school, who have been there for five or 10 years, who have actually, if you add it together, been in there twice twice as often as I have, just over a way extended period of time. So that's within that kind of art of war methodology that we talked about at the start of the podcast. But now we need to talk about the next part of accelerating your training. So we touched on it briefly there, which is your your promos and your charisma. Most training schools, unfortunately, will not cover promos as much as they need to. And I have a theory for this. It's because people who open training schools tend to be experts more so on the side of the physical aspects of things. On the if they're training wrestling, then they're more likely going to be technical wrestling experts or they have excellent matches or something like that. Right? If they're a reputable training school, they get booked all the time. That's likely what it is. There's actually only really there's a very small group of excellent promo uh, wrestlers in the UK or even in the world, you know, that is more of a rarity. So the chances are you might not have a, a, the trainer might just not be an expert. There are people in the UK who are phenomenal professional wrestlers, but don't actually engage with doing promos all that often. So again, who are they to give advice about doing promos? That is a bit of an issue. But luckily for you, promos is something that you can really research in your own time. And we hear all the cliches, but it is true. Really just try and be an extension of yourself. Find a character that that is intuitive of who you are. When I do seminars, every seminar I ever do, I ask people, tell me your best traits and your worst traits and be honest. And for me, I'll tell you mine. So my good traits are, you know, I'm, I'm, I would like to think that I'm, I'm confident, I work very hard, I'm, uh, I'm an intense individual, I know, no, that's not good or bad, um, but I'm, I'm loyal, I would like to think I'm relatively kind in certain situations, right? Some other people might have other ideas, but the negative traits are the easier ones to make characters out of. So here we go, I'm, I, especially before I started wrestling, but I know I can be arrogant, I can be overbearing, I can be over the top, I talk over people, I can be annoying, I can be, I can be pretty hard to deal with. But guess what? Thankfully for me, that makes an excellent wrestling character. But again, we're not actors here, right? So we're, we can't, you can't expect us to just right off the bat come up with these, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio style monologues. Maybe some of you can. If you've got an acting background or it's something you've studied, good for you. But for me, that wasn't the case. I spoke to you all last time about how before I got into wrestling, luckily for me, I had been doing gigs for 10 years and effectively cutting promos on stage for 10 years, which is great for my confidence of speaking. But when I first started doing promos in the training school, I was like, you know, this is Joe Hendry here and I'm going to do this and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and da, 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 and I'm going to tell you that. And I might as well, I might as well have gone and done the rock's catchphrases because Phonetically, I was just reciting a rock promo, but with my name, because that's kind of who I looked up to promo wise. But guess what? They already have uh, the rock. You need to be the first you. So the easiest thing for me to do was to identify my negative traits, which we spoke about last time. And I told a bit of a story about why. Uh, but basically, I used to be uh, a bit overbearing, a bit overconfident, a bit arrogant. And I used to be kind of a bit too out there about the band. They used to push the band and all my friends and family, give us a CD, give us a CD. And you know, who did it remind me of? It reminded me of David Brent 
from the, the office, the UK version. We talked about this last time, but I made the connection between those two and I was like, okay, so remember when I said about what would happen if John Cena was in ICW? That was my idea for the local hero character. So I had that. We had a little bit of Kurt Angle and I was like, let's take David Brent from the office and put him into ICW? How would he interact with this character? And how would he interact with that character? And how would he interact with the boss who might not want to book him yet in this promo, but he thinks that he's the man? And that's what we did. And we just rolled with that. And I was basically just being a combination of these characters, but in my own words. So that's that's how I came up with my character. So what I want you to do is that's another way how you can accelerate your training is most people just won't do promos. You can come up with a character by just thinking about your positive and your negative traits and creating a character around it. So the great thing is what I've noticed with great, not just comedy writing, but great writing is that if you have great characters, the jokes write themselves. If you have great characters, the stories write themselves. The best shows, whether it be cartoons, whether it be sitcoms, whether it be dramas, whatever, the best shows have amazing characters. Because when you put those characters in a certain situation, you can almost anticipate how they're going to react. Like when you watch Friends and there's a certain situation over happening over here with Rachel, you think, oh, wait till Joey sees this. You can already preempt how they're going to react. When The Rock came out and someone started having a go at him, he'd go, is that what you think? And people would know, oh, he's going to say it, he's going to say it. You can create that familiarity because, again, that's what I'm talking about. When great characters get in these situations, the scenarios write themselves. Now, again, I want to give you different examples of promos because some people are very quick on their feet. i got to be honest, I'm not that quick on my feet. I'm actually not. I need to, especially when it comes to promos, a lot of it I need to think about beforehand. So when I do my entrances, that's a perfect example. I think about it all beforehand. But I look at The Rock's promos, and I look at them and I think, let's just take a little step back a second, right? He would be the perfect blueprint if you were someone that was like, right, I can't really think on my feet because, listen, if I say to you, what is the, like, so The Rock's in Glasgow and he's facing Joe Hendry. Tell me how the promo's going to go. You guys can go, okay, so probably he's going to come out and say, finally, The Rock has come back to Glasgow. Woo! Everyone goes nuts. Uh, so, sorry, finally, The Rock has come back to Glasgow. And then he goes through all this stuff. Um, and he says, uh, I start talking. And he goes, it doesn't matter what you think. And then he goes, so here's what you can do. And let's say if I have the gold jacket on or whatever, I, he's going to turn that gold jacket. He's going to turn it sideways. And you know what comes next. My point is, if you can create an amazing character with these preset catchphrases, you can actually basically apply it to anywhere. You don't even have to apply any, you know, on the spot thinking. You can create this template for your character in the, the, you can already be thinking about this in the training school. And like I say, don't copy that. But if you can create these, you can actually, if you're someone who gets nervous about public speaking and you can't think of things on the spot, then that's a way to overcome that. You can actually create your own catchphrases that you can slot into any situation. Basically, The Rock just came back to a place and shoved whatever item was nearby up somebody's candy ass. And hey, that worked. That worked certainly very well for him. I understand The Rock can obviously think very well on his feet as well. Um, he's, in my opinion, the best pro of all time. But I'm just giving you an example of things that you can be thinking about in your training school to be basically, at the end of the day, I hate to say it, wrestling is a team sport, but it's an individual sport at the same time that we're all competing for those all-important spots. And like I say, wrestling's got some of the best people, but it's got lots of the worst people that, you're, that you'll ever meet. Lots of people who are going to be stab you right in the back to get that spot before you. So, again, just watch out for that. But basically, the more of these elements that you can put together, the more likely you are going to get booked. So... Where do we go from here? So you've gone to training school regularly. You've done that part of it. You've been really working on the physique. You've been really working on the diet. You've been keeping your attitude in check. You're asking lots of questions, but you're not being overbearing about, you know, stupid, uh, like, dirt sheet questions. You're not wearing your pro wrestling tees in there. You're you're not in there for, you know, you know what I mean? You're not kind of, uh, you're not 
acting like a, a fan in there. You're being professional about it. You've been working on your promos. You're really putting in all the work. You've you've gotten all the training sessions. You're effectively, for lack of a better term, you're all in on this. Um, so that is really how you're going to accelerate your training. And when you go to training, one of the best things you can do is have a plan about maybe what you want to go over. Because usually if you're lucky, in a lot of training schools, you'll have your, your training and then you might have you know 15 or 20 minutes of free ring time where you can work on your own things with the trainer. And maybe go, I had this idea to do this or let's take it back to the character. If you are you know a seven foot monster, then maybe you might want to be throwing people around and showing off your the fact that you're a monster and how big you are whereas if you're built like Rey Mysterio you're like right well maybe I need to show off my speed and my athleticism and things like that if you're someone like myself it's like you know I do like to do the strength thing I do the double fall away with people I think about again how would Joe Hendry interact in these situations well he would pick up both guys and do that but then instead of locking up maybe Joe Hendry tries to get the two on one arm tie and all that these are amateur wrestling things I'm, I'm talking about but uh, you understand what I'm saying. I'm just saying it all derives back to a plan. You don't want to go in there and be an exact replica of everyone else at that training school. You want to go in with your own ideas and your own plan. At the same time, you want to be attending all the different seminars that you can. You want to be asking questions. And here's another one, people, that people don't do. Go with a notepad. Trust me, go with a notepad. Believe it or not, a notepad is the most valuable tool that I have today. It's the cheapest one and it's the most valuable tool that I have. I've now gone back to using one every single day and I absolutely love it. Bring a notepad to training in case you need to write down important stuff that you need to remember. Now, there will come a time where you need to just remember things and you hear them once and you remember them and that's that. But when you're starting out, take the notepad with you. How can it hurt? Not only that, you've been aware of your personal hygiene. I know that sounds like an obvious thing to a lot of people, but you would be amazed the amount of people that do not shower, um, that, who are not clean before they come to training, who are wearing dirty clothes, who are just not being considerate to the other people around them, who they're in very close proximity with. That is one guaranteed way to get yourself heat before you've even done anything. Can you imagine if you want people to buy in to use a brand and you're just stinking the place up. You know, you just don't want to be doing that. So you've taken care of your hygiene, you're watching your P's and Q's, you're trying not to say stupid stuff, but you're asking good questions. Ask genuine questions. Ask ask questions that you think will benefit your career. Don't say things like, oh, how much do you get paid for your first match? Because that's not really what should be in your mind. You know? All you should be concerned about when you're at training is how to get better in every one of those areas that I've talked about. In depth today, we went into the the look side of things. And you can come up with your wrestling gear and all that later, but the part that we talked about today is the physique. And now remember, it breaks down into the sleep, the diet, and the exercise. And we've told you what videos to watch. We don't need to go to that. But you're being mindful of that stuff. You're looking at promos that you like online. I like this person for that reason, this person for that reason. I'm taking these influences... And I'm mixing it up over here in a pot with my already given personality that I have. And where does my personality fit in here? And when you're training, you're doing what's asked of you. You're doing it in a safe way. You're not taking stupid risks. You're not worrying about doing stupid moves. You're just trying your very best to learn the craft of professional wrestling. And most importantly, folks, you are attending consistently. You're attending the seminars as well. And I'm going to bring it to a close, folks, because it's really, it is as simple as that. The main, one of the main reasons I'm doing this is because I want to do a YouTube series on this as well. Not the full video. The full video is not going to go on YouTube. What I'm going to do is I am going to launch a Patreon. Um, which is going to include this stuff, but also my The Joe Hendry Show podcast. It's going to include my entrances. Like, you will get early access to all of these things on the Patreon, and as well as the Patreon, if you're one of the, uh, whatever tier it is, but if you're one of the subscribers on Patreon, you will be able to come to me with questions regarding your professional wrestling training. I will be offering mentoring as part of the Patreon package, and it will be priced very competitively. So there will be options for fans with the Joe Hendry show and stuff like that. There will be options 
for uh, just trainees who want a little bit more, who maybe want me to look into their case individually and give them some advice and really give them some consultancy, with, if you will, and it will be very competitively priced. Or there are options for which include all the content, but all, you get some merch as well along with it. So it's really up to yourselves. We're going to be launching that at the end of the February. Uh, sorry, my chair's squeaking away there. We're going to be launching that at the end of February. Um, so that just to give you guys a little update. That's that's what we're going to be doing. I hope you guys got something out of this. Um, and But if you really, again, one of the main reasons of doing this is I want to condense this down into a one or two minute YouTube videos where part one was talking about finding a training school and part two is about talking about accelerating your training. And if you really employ these things, it's really diff- It's The thing that's crazy is it really is just that simple. The things I've talked about. Get yourself in decent shape. Watch the videos I've told you to watch. Seek the expertise I've told you to, to seek. If you can't afford a personal trainer, find somebody that knows there are people out there. Not only that, um, you're going to go, it's that consistent attendance. That is the main thing. Um, you're putting in the time outside of the gym. You're, you're working on your physique, your diet, and you're trying to get your sleep right. You've built up the funds to make sure that you can attend regularly. These are the things. I'm also going to do a podcast on how to earn money whilst you're training. Because like I said, we touched on it briefly. There's things in your room that you can sell. But I'm going to tell you the strategy I used. Um, which is when I started, I was working in a minimum wage job. And by the end of my professional wrestling training, I had a managerial position uh, within an oil and gas firm, you know, which is a bit of a transition, but I applied a lot of the same logic. And originally when I went into it, I was kind of thinking, you know, I want a job with no responsibility. So I got a minimum wage job. I, we didn't even get tips. I was just basically cleaning tables and ladling soup, which, you know, I quite enjoyed it. There was no problem with it, but it didn't pay that well. And the hours got very long and I was getting very tired and it was taking away from my training. So I needed to transition to, I, by the end, this managerial market manager role I had was part-time, but it was relatively well paid. So I was actually kind of making just about the same money, but working half the hours. So it, it was never super well paid. It was a very local company, but by the end of it, I was working part-time, but earning a, what would be the equivalent of a full-time minimum wage. So I'll give you a little bit of advice on how you can apply some of these principles and get to that point. Because before I had the, the idea that um, it was better to have a minimum wage job and no responsibility. And then I found out that minimum wage jobs are actually the ones where people are worked the absolute hardest. So it was better for me to get a job that was related to what I actually wanted to do. And I realized very quickly that when you work within the corporate environment, you can really get most of your work done within a few hours. And then you can spend the rest of the time thinking about wrestling. So I'm going to do a podcast on how to balance your life with wrestling training. This is really just about accelerating your training. The things I've been talking about today are really just the basic principles that you need to put into place to make sure that that you're going to get as good as quickly as you can in an efficient way. You're not skipping any steps out. You're doing all the work. But I guarantee if you follow some of these principles, you're going to have some of the same success that I had. Well, I can't guarantee that, but basically what I'm saying is if you put in that work, good things are going to happen. That I can guarantee. And how this relates as well, as I said to you guys, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I am not happy at all where I'm at in professional wrestling right now. A lot of people say you should be grateful for where you are. I am grateful. I have gratitude for the amazing experiences I've been able to have. I've been all over the world. I've wrestled in Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, Ireland, Germany, Canada, South Africa, Australia, Mexico, United States. I can't remember if I mentioned yes, but you get the idea. I've wrestled in, in Romania as well. I've wrestled in all these places and I've been able to pursue my dream and earn money at the same time. I mean, how awesome is that? But that should not stop you from wanting more. And that's not greed. That's just you wanting to reach your full potential. I know, and I knew since day one that for some reason, I have what it takes to be the top of the business. I have what it takes to be the world champion. I don't know why that is. That's just within me. That feeling is within me. And for a few years there, that kind of slipped away. And now I'm bringing it back because I need to go back to that trainee mentality. That humbleness and that consistency is what will lead you to greatness. 
Also, while you're training, make sure to watch motivational videos. What I've started doing and again, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Like I say, I'm going to go back to training. I'm going to start going in the ring and I'm going to update you guys as I do it. But what I've started to do now is I'm writing down a schedule of what I have. So in the morning, I know as soon as I wake up, I'm going to watch either wrestling matches. And that's another thing, by the way, watch as many matches as possible. Okay, but don't lose sight of what you like, because when you get in the wrestling bubble, you start off watching, like me, I started off watching the Attitude Era and Rock and Stone Cold and Triple H and Chris Jericho and Ric Flair and blah, 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 and then by the end of it, I'm watching, you know, to be fair, I watched World of Sport before, but now I'm watching, you know, Japanese heavyweights and all that sort of stuff, don't forget why you got into it, don't forget, because that's kind of what you need to appeal to, you know, you kind of need to be true to the reason that you got into it. So you can get stuck in the wrestling bubble is what I'm saying. But just keep always remember why you got into it. So while I watch that stuff, every so often I watch some rock and promos and Kurt Angle segments and stuff like that to remind me who my influences are and what I do. Because as much as I enjoy like ni- these, not niche, but like, you know, um, less mainstream style of wrestling, the mainstream style of wrestling is really what got me into it. And that's what my character and my entire brand is based on so that's kind of what I need to have fresh in my mind you know what I'm saying so I just watch that as often as possible so when I wake up that's what I do I take the dog on a run for we go out for about half an hour to 45 minutes we go for a long run I come back uh, get a shower and then I watch motivational videos it's either Arnold Schwarzenegger or it's The Rock or it's Gary V or it's Conor McGregor whoever inspires you a piece of the wall just just fell off that did not inspire me. I'm going to put that back on. Oh my God, it's new over here. There we go. I'll fix that properly in a second. But um, whoever inspires you, watch their stuff, okay? So whoever that may be, because again, remember when I was talking about, I told people when I first started in wrestling, I'm going to get a try in my first year. That was ludicrous. No one in Scotland had done that. But for some reason, I managed to do it. And I believe it's because I put that out there. Not on social media, not saying, I'm going to do this because you look like a bell end. But discuss it with your friends and family. These are my goals. This is what I want. You don't need to say to your trainer, I'm going to do that. But you can say to your trainer, this is what I would like to eventually pursue. Be a little bit bolder when you're talking to your friends and family and go, I'm going to be the world champion. Don't say that to your trainer. Don't say that to other professional wrestlers, but say that to your real close friends and family. Let them know what your goals are. Put it out there in the universe and start taking serious, actionable steps towards doing that. So like I said, I've got a schedule. I get up, watch some wrestling videos. We go out for a run. We come back. I watch motivational videos. Then I'll answer my emails. I'll look into some bookings. And then I know on a Monday, right, I'm doing weightlifting at four o'clock. I have built myself my own schedule and I feel that you kind of need to have the same thing. You guys need to approach that. So I'm going to update you guys about what I'm doing, what my schedule is. I might even publish it on my Discord or we might start a Facebook group or something like that. But I'm going to be very open with you guys about what I'm doing and I want you to watch my physique change shape. I want you to watch my matches get better. I want you to watch my promos get better. I want you to see my happiness and my satisfaction level improve. And I want all you guys to have the same. So I want to thank everyone for joining me. That was Accelerating Your Training. One of the next episodes might be about how to, basically the financials behind training as a profession, like sorting yourself out financially. It might be work-life balance. It might be whatever it is. I'll, I'll think of the next episode, but if you guys have any ideas, uh, tweet me le- or go on the Discord and leave some comments about it. Let me know what you guys want to know about in professional wrestling. But this was episode two, and it really is as simple as that, folks. Get inspired, get yourself in shape, and just attend as often as you possibly can. If you do that, you will be ahead of almost everyone else. And that is unfortunately what it's about. In the end, the race is against yourself. But in professional wrestling, you are competing with your colleagues for these spots, even though some of them will end up as your best friends 
you're still competing with them for a spot. It's this weird thing in the business that we'll get into on a different day. But anyway, this has been episode two of How to Become a Professional Wrestler. Remember to subscribe, whether it be on Spotify or iTunes, or it's going to be in all those places, Spotify, iTunes, Podbay, Podbean, Stitcher, whatever. We really appreciate all the support there. Um, if you want to support me directly, if you're on watching on Twitch right now, um, you can subscribe on Twitch. That helps. Um, also, if you want to take a step further, go to Henry Shop dot com and get yourself in return it's something in return as well you can get some awesome t-shirts there uh, i've got some awesome merch for you guys that i put a lot of pride into so you can go there and get all that stuff um so you can support that way and um, if you're able to if anyone has itunes and you're on there please go on the joe henry show there and leave us some good comments and stuff every time that you do that it helps exponentially it really helps and um, if you have amazon prime uh, you can basically link that to, to your Twitch Prime account. So basically just get a Twitch account, link it to your Amazon Prime account, and you get actually a free subscription. You can then subscribe to my channel, which then supports this channel financially and this podcast financially, and you don't need to spend anything extra. You just support this Twitch channel, and basically we get another $3.50, I think it is, and you don't have to spend anything. It's just using up your free subscription on Twitch Prime. So check that out if you have Amazon Prime. It's much appreciated. Those are the ways that you can support me. But also, guys, um, just remember we are going to launch a Patreon at the end of February. Um, I don't think we're going to hold any content back. I think we will eventually release all the content for free. Um, but it's just our, our subscribers on Patreon will get it probably uh, half a week or a week early or whatever it is. You guys will probably get access to it live or close to live. Um, whereas if you're not a Patreon subscriber, you might just have to wait a week to get the content. You might not be able to be involved in the live chat or something like that. I don't know what it's going to be, but there will be a delay is what I'm saying on both podcasts. So, um, the support has been phenomenal, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, I am just so passionate about this right now. And again, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I know it's difficult. And I've been resting on my laurels a little bit. And I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to let you guys know the action that I'm taking. We talked about a little bit today with the Arnold Schwarzenegger stuff. Go check out that video. It's the Blueprint series. And I think it's called Training for Mass. Arnold Schwarzenegger for Muscle Farm. Make that the next thing that you do. If not, go and add it to your playlist or add to your watch later to go check out. But that really is essential viewing. Um, I just... Guys, want to thank you so much for all your support. Um, I'm having, you know what? I'm having a lot of fun on this journey right now. When I talk about upping my game, I did that at Defiant. I went back to the custom entrances, and it was super fun. And it was, I had such a great time. And I think everyone else enjoyed it as well. And actually, I can't believe I forgot this. Kind of the main way to support me right now is I really want to build up my YouTube channel. That is essential. We are putting so much time into that right now. And it's just unfortunate the subscriber count is going up rather slowly. And it's a shame because we have got some awesome content on there. I've got, you know, my, I've got basically, I'm uploading all my music videos from the actual entrances, the music videos in full, um, kind of exclusively there. So if you guys want to head over to there, if someone could type it into the, the chat, I'd be really appreciative. But I think it's just youtube.com forward slash Joe Hendry. Um, so if someone could type that in, it would be super appreciated. And if you guys could all go there and subscribe right now, I'm setting myself a personal goal of growing my YouTube channel. Uh, unfortunately, Sean, you need to type it out manually. <laughs> it's youtube.com forward slash Joe Henry, but thank you. Um, if There you go, my man. That's the one. Um, if you click on youtube.com forward slash Joe Hendry um, and go subscribe, that will help us because my goal is I'm going to try and grow at 5%, between 5 and 10% every single month this year at a minimum. That's my goal. We're going to push yourselves this year, people. All of your goals are possible. All of your goals are possible. All right, folks. Thank you so much. I think we're done. Thank you for the subscriptions. Thank you to those who subscribed on Twitch. Also, I've just noticed, thank you to Alpha Iyer, who has uh, popped a little something in and said thanks for the advice. Um, it's super appreciated, and thank you 
for your support, folks. I absolutely love doing this. We will be back next Wednesday. I think I will probably continue to do, to do this podcast on Thursday nights, but in between then, we will be doing streams on Nintendo Switch and stuff like that. And um, if you're listening on the audio podcast, please do subscribe. I've yapped on enough now for an hour and 42 minutes, but I hope that you got something out of this. And folks, I love nothing more than to hear about your success stories. So join us on Discord or tweet me or whatever. Just get in touch. Let me know if you're using any of this advice and if it's valuable to you you know let us know because i love to know that it's working for you guys um and i'm just in a a good place talking about this stuff right now so i appreciate that uh it was a bit of a difficult year there for me but i feel 2019 is kicking off just the right way and i want you you all to feel the exact same way thank you so much folks i will see you next time